now we are going to talk about what is the requirement what workflow we are going to design so the requirement is trigger a workflow for invoice when the payment block is set and is assigned to a role and after that if the block is set it is assigned to a role based on company code the user will have the option to release the block or change the invoice okay this is a simple workflow but we'll go through a bunch of steps you'll see okay so first of all we have to find from scratch what is the particular transaction code so i'm just going from here emma so i'll just go from probably i'll go from fb03 this is the transaction code so here is the transaction code that they will have and probably uh let's see and if i double click on it here I double click on it uh, not this one so we'll go through that this is the geo place this one. Post TV, not this one okay we'll go from mido transaction mir4 that's much better so go over here mir4 okay now let's go we'll pick another one we'll pick a brand new one mir4 and we'll take five one Just let's go to our table EKB and we'll get a good number. So to those let's get something 2020. Fiscal year 2020 document here. Because I want to pick 2020 because we may have some issues not here. Uh, because uh, we have stuff for fiscal year closing and all those things. So it's not there, but we'll get something for here. So we'll pick up this one. So five one. Okay. This is the number. The invoice number. And put this here. Two zero one eight. And so the requirement is okay. It, it exists which here. So let's put just enter year to take care of okay so it was year oh, it was in 2019 sorry so now this was cancelled already okay let's find another one let's pick the one that we had uh, so again if you see in SAP workflow finding data is a problem so you might want to have something give you a bunch of data okay so here we'll go to follow on document okay and here we are going to put a block so the requirement is if i go here and i put a block suppose e it should trigger a walk okay now the next portion what we are going to do is this is the requirement now what we are going to do we have to go to a transaction which is sweel okay let's go to sweel to find whether there is any standard event that got triggered okay so we execute and there's nothing or that got triggered okay so we have to find a way to trigger an event now in sap everything when you make changes on a standard transaction code there's something called change document that gets triggered okay so in order to see what is a change document we can just go here to this table se16 okay and here you put cdhdr this is the table name and once you put this table name and here today we change the so my id student 011 and this is the date today's date which is 111 and uh, oops, sorry not this one 111 and we'll execute okay so if you see there is three entries that we did and we'll pick up the latest one which we did so 11 50 19 okay so this is the change document object i can use now you we might want to see what actually happened in this change okay so let me close some sessions now and workflow builder i'll close 
I'll close something here and I'll put CD boss here. Yes. So the header is the CDHDR is the header. This is the line item which gives me more value. So what I have to populate here is these these things. Okay. So I'll populate this control Y control C and I'll just populate this. Now execute. Okay, yeah, because something was that is that was getting truncated. So that's why it's popular. So if you see here, yeah, this is the field and the change uh, indicator is you and this was the name. So now what I'm going to do is now I'll show you how to trigger an event. Okay. So for this, there's no standard event getting triggered. Now what we are going to do, we know the business object for this for this type of transaction code. Let's find the business object. We go to follow on documents. Okay. Let's see. Follow on document. And we go to workflow, archive workflow. And this is the business object. Pretty simple. Okay. Now what we are going to do is W1. None of the standard workflow got standard uh, events got triggered, but still we will see some events here. What other events are there? So there's some bunch of other events, but not there's a change event, but probably we'll create our own. So how to create our own? Okay. So to create a subtype, we click Z. Uh, I think we have to follow some process here. You can see Z star. I just want to make sure this is our naming convention process that we have to follow. Let me see. Uh, go to oops. Just here I have to give a program name. Let's see, create Z. So it's D11. I have to create a new session and we'll go to SW1. I just so this is another thing that you have to follow. You have to follow the naming convention. This system where I'm doing, they have the naming convention forced, so you cannot create the programs out of the naming convention. So here, what we are going to do, we'll put Z. Here, okay, and we'll create a subtype object type not defined. Okay, we'll create BKPF and we'll create subtype and we'll put Z BKPF. Okay, and here I'll put uh, this one C B B C K P F and this is uh, same thing. I'll just put description invoice and I need to put a number Z S D eleven underscore invoice. So let's see. I'll put this cross <coughs> and I'll put local logics here. You know the addition for insert. Uh, so I'm lacking the authorization. That's not good. Okay. Uh, so let's go here. We'll find the place. This message number. We'll Find a way to do something. Now EU five one six. EU five one six. So here, well, let's find a different way. So what we are going to do is just um, since we I don't have the authorization, uh, let me see. Create something. Let's see. And put this and put 
this one like this object type and name description and this and we put class and we put local uh, objects Oh, there it is. That it was the naming convention that was the problem. Okay, that's good. So we found a way. So that's important. Okay. So these are the things you have to follow because this in some projects the naming convention is very strict. So here what I'm going to do is create uh, something called uh, an event. We'll create an event and we'll put uh, a payment uh, block. Okay. Uh, wrong spelling that happens <laughs> but you know payment block so we we'll just click yes okay now every time you create something you have to go here edit change to component to implement it, okay and then the same thing you have to do generate if you cannot be generated because you have to do it object type to implement it okay so then it gets generated. So this event we have triggered. Now you might say how to trigger this event. Now a person who is smart will trigger it through a transaction code. A person who doesn't really know workflow will try to trigger it through code, which is not the way. Since you are a workflow consultant, you should be only writing code. You should use the standard features. Okay, so this is a custom to event that we triggered but now we are going to use some standard configuration so this transaction code SWEC will help you SWEC is something which helps you to trigger workflow events by change document okay so what I'm going to do is here if you see it has belleg which is there and here we have field restrictions so now if I, I can add some field restrictions and I put uh, suppose here I'll put one uh, the table name is bsec and uh, oh the table name was bsec or no. field restrictions would be bsec it was bsec or bkp I think right uh, the table name would be uh, yeah bsec CLSPR and the old value is this and the new value is suppose A okay and we'll save it press enter mm -hmm. and here is the save oh this it made it for change oops we shouldn't do it we we'll close it back out no because i want to use my own so i was trying to use the old standard event which i should do. okay see but if you want you put but just to make sure we don't mess up something so what we are going to do is we are going to copy this okay now here we'll put uh, bkp and we'll put now here this event will not show up that we triggered i made a mistake we have to do a delegation okay so what is delegation I'll show so what happens is this is now my child but but my child is the child of BKPF but it's not registered as, as his father or mother okay so in order to do the registration you can do a settings delegate okay and here we'll just create we'll just copy one change mode Caution, yes, we know it's crossed line and we are going to use it. Now here we will put BKPF, that's my parent, and this is the one where we'll put a child and we'll hit save and that's it. It will ask for a customizing request, which is fine. Uh, it's not involved in request is okay. <clears throat> then we we'll create one uh, event. Center. So that's it. Now, before, so if I if I click here now, you see 
this event is now showing up. So since it was registered, the family you get this event. Okay. So this is here on change. Okay. Now we press center. Okay. Uh, number of dependent copies is two. Now we will see our stuff. PKPF payment and here we'll go to field restriction and we'll just go to the condition editor because that's what I like. Uh -huh. This is much better than the table thing. So here what I'll do is I'll remove all this. I don't care. These things are old ones. Okay. Now here what we are going to search is the LSPR. Where is it? Where are you? Here. Old me equals we put equals and we we'll put uh, a or no we'll trigger it regardless okay <clears throat> now here we trigger it it's yes now it's good now we'll see the fun part now we are going to create the workflow template we have done all our preliminaries we haven't done the design yet so we'll just go to our transaction code okay so the transaction code is slash n p f t c workflow template go to workflow template and we put c s t 11 b k p f okay we'll click create workflow for uh, inputs one and here we will save it. Let's see, this is saved. Okay, that's good. So it stopped. Now, what we are going to do is here we'll put create. The first thing is here that we are doing is we are going to create container elements. Container elements are. Uh, variables or elements that you are going to use in the workflow template okay and these are very important so here we are going to put invoice you can just put invoice so what is it you put invoice here and we put invoice and here in the reference we put object type business object type here and we put b k and here in the properties you got import export we will make it mandatory that's it and we'll save it boom it's done now what we are going to do is this is the this is the one that we triggered now we might want to create some other ones okay so what we are going to create is suppose uh, payment block just for the heck uh, or we don't need it now. We create later on. Okay. So now here, like as I said in the theoretical portion, I'll add the numbers. Okay. So I'll put the company code and the document number. This makes my workflow look nice. Okay. Save. Now here, triggering event. Okay. The next portion about triggering event is you put business object type and here we put bk pf okay now here we have our event that we created payment blocks pretty simple save okay now we activate this okay okay activate it okay this is the event so when i clicked on it i think i'll show i will not show this one what i'll show is here uh, uh, is let's go to our transaction. SWE2, and if I go here, okay. Now let's try BKPF, 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 BKPF. Where is BKPF? PKPF, you see, this entry has been created the moment I created the workflow. Now, as I said, these 
SAP has now taken our event as its event because we have a parent-child relationship and it's making the phone call but in order to receive the phone call we have to e activate this how you can activate you can activate from here but we can activate from here the moment i do this and i save it it will be activated there okay so do we have a refresh button here somewhere no so we just go back probably there was a refresh button uh, in the top probably let me see it should be refresh button no yes no probably not okay so bk oh it's in the first page only see aha uh -huh. now it's triggered see i'll receive the phone call now okay so now what we are going to do is we are just going to go to the workflow builder now everything is done we have found the way to trigger the workflow now we have to find the process where they will approve okay so in order to approve so what we are going to do is we are going to click you can double click or you can right click whatever you want create and here you will put a user decision okay so here user decision okay here we'll say approve approve invoice Here we can put ampersand. So you might say, why you are putting ampersand? Because here we can put parameter. So the parameters we can put the document number and the year, doc probably the document number, and uh, we put, can put. Let's see, what more values it has? It doesn't have much important values. Uh, We'll, we'll we'll tweak it and we'll add some more stuff here okay so now this is what is there and uh, and here we'll say approve uh, thing is approve and here you can see you can say required mandatory uh, we'll see mandatory they need to enter a comment and then you have uh, change okay so change and you can see a mandatory here you need to add a note and this is this is what we have now now here this defines whom it will be sent so we can define a rule here so let's see you can see test it doesn't exist so we'll create one so how you create a rule so this is going to be a little uh, on the HR side but we'll show you PFAC okay so we'll put CST test oops no to create we'll create a rule and we'll put so here you have different option most of the time standard SAP uses function to be executed okay now there are other steps will show you responsibilities okay and rules for approval this is the name and and we say and we can say terminate full resolution without result so this i'll show this what happens is if you if the rule doesn't find uh, any users the workflow will terminate so that's the process so uh, I'll show how we can we um, how we can um, take care of uh, this process where suppose someone forgets to maintain uh, a rule or maintain the user for a particular company code and how you can handle that situation okay so now um, we'll save it so the moment we saved it okay now here we have defined the rule now what is the container the container will save will have company code okay company code control e company code and here we'll put uh, the our type name is uh, company code is not a valid element name so it cannot have uh, spaces specify a type name here we'll put uh, bookers that's the company code, KRS, 
and here we'll say it's always by default okay if you want you can put multi-line that means you can enter multiple company code that is assigned to a particular users or multiple users and we can say this is mandatory because we need the company code always okay so now we have defined this now now here you define how to maintain the users okay so you create here something okay rules for approval okay we click create let me see which company code was it so we have 1001 so we we'll just use here if you see 1001 and if i want 1003 i don't know whether it's there or not and here you put a priority so the priority the more the priority the first it will be used to calculate okay so i'll show you all these things it's pretty fun uh, so once we save it now now we have created this entry now we will be assigning a user suppose uh, i'll find so you can assign user position or unit job work center whatever you want so i'll just use users most company uses position because position is permanent a user or personal number is not permanent because now you might say what you are talking about so suppose you are working for a company as a manager okay you can get you can you can leave the company because you got a better opportunity so your name and user and person is has left but the manager position is still there so another person bob will come and join this company so that's the whole thing so here you can so i'm showing you how to maintain this thing so here we can just put uh, student Mm, user student or this and here you can search with wildcard because this is standard SAP so this is standard SAP out of the box so we can just use this one so let me use this one I'll put my one also and I'll press enter okay and here it is so here if you see you can say continue and you say continue here if you see these are the two users now maintained. now what i was talking about is now here you can simulate something okay it will open a session see the problem is i'm running out of sessions so let me see let me close this um, can i close you please yes okay so now i saved it and now i'll put one zero one zero and do not support any structures and elements. Okay, does not set rocks. Didn't say. Uh, okay, it probably the container element was messed up. Is it not the type? Because okay, let me change it and put it uh, sec focus. Now it shows. Okay. Yeah. Now if I put something else, let's put some other company code. Uh, we'll put some other company code. And shows nothing. So, so now that was the thing. If you see, it's, it's terminating. Now, in order to handle this, you should you need to create. What we'll do is we'll just copy this one and we'll create admin and what we can do is here we'll change it and i'll put to this one i can delete and i'll put here star okay and uh, here suppose i put uh, click here insert agent assignment and i put user and i click student uh, suppose one three I click create and now you see there now if I put here some company code that we didn't maintain 
which was post and I press enter it picks up that means so this is what we did now what we have done now the whole purpose is we created this rule now we are going to go to workflow builder and I put this here okay now here is the binding so binding is very important I forgot to tell binding is imagine you have an event and I'll show it back there okay let me show it from because I completely forgot that and we just press enter for now and we'll activate okay you can save it also but I'll prefer activation I'll go back to the initial place here is the triggering event this data needs to pass this is the button call binding editor so here we do the mapping so here by default s4 sap does it but if you have something else you could have bind it so here if you notice this is the event container and this is the workflow container this is very important binding is very important these are different containers it needs to move from here to here into the workflow then similarly again it moves from workflow to task task to method workflow to uh, diff different places okay now this is empty why it's showing empty because it's messed up mm -hmm. so i saved it but it didn't save it okay let's we'll just add it again okay create decision and see approve invoice uh, here we will put parameter invoice so we are doing this again and here approve approve we'll put a justification required required change that's what the requirement was change this will come as a button okay and here we we'll put a rule and we we'll put a rule which is this one okay and here we we'll click on binding again as i said the binding will be company code oops here, company code dragging business to invoice company code this is workflow container this is the rule container okay press enter and we'll now here by default SAP provides this we want or oh, you will never change this you will copy this so what we are going to do we are going to copy and go to another transaction PFTC the same transaction but we will choose standard task and we will we'll select this we will remove this TS and we will copy and we will put Z ST11 decision okay. and here you put a different one you put an approve invoice the reason now okay let me show you what generally people does and what creates this. this is why i'm going to change it so i'll put a general decision what it used to be okay and i'll hit save mm -hmm. now i'll go change mode container uh, transfer missing elements okay that's fine we'll save it okay now this is my custom okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this and i'll put this one okay that's it and i'll press enter now okay now another thing about these things you have to make is general task okay so otherwise it will not show up so generally make it general task now these are different options i'll just reiterate some of these options so what you can say a uh, this option general task means even if the person was not maintained in the rule he can be assigned but we have covered it in the rule but if you want to put another filter you will say general forwarding not allowed and all those things so you click on general task and you click transfer and here we click enter this and we will say save okay and what i'll do is i'll create another version just put a hack because the last time it dropped so here 
is our process approve invoices so now what we can do is also we will build a process where you might say that hey uh, we have a process where um, the that event this this particular task should disappear if someone releases it from outside so in order to get it released from outside we have to check again so there might be a requirement for like that so in those cases uh, we'll, we'll cover it while we are testing this thing okay so this is this this is this this is what we did for this is a simple decision task let me see what we can do probably we'll create another send email that uh, or we'll say or probably I think the word needs to be changed to release non designing and see it release. I'm releasing the block and here I didn't see one thing uh, so the standard task didn't change to general general task enter is locked by you okay I was locking this really I lock it okay here so I just go out attributes general task now it will show doing something so these are scenarios where which happens everywhere okay so these are real life scenarios and when we'll be doing the when we'll be designing your workflow template you will have the same thing okay so this is very important so it's tweaking tweaking and what is this column configuration so these are the column configuration okay okay now you see this is green before it was grayed out so now I'll click release. Now I'll just create an, I'll probably create an email step where we'll send an email to the initiator that this has been approved. Okay. So we can get it. We'll show. So this is a standard send email step. Okay. We'll click in, tokens up. And here we can say uh, the invoice is released okay okay and you might say we'll put some more description since we are professional document number is released I will say yes And we'll, in the testing phase, we'll see how we'll add more things, though it's not part of the development, but that makes you different from others. Okay. Send email, send email for invoice. So I did this very good. Now it's there. I activate. <clears throat> The activation is done now what we can do is this is what we did now for changes we'll do so these are different so if you see these are different steps you can add okay now we'll add more use more steps as and when we'll be testing more on this uh, so this covers the portion of the development phase the next portion of the tutorial will show about the testing